it's your boy Fish and Ken, Hook City TV, man, and I'm back. Listen, I'm going to make this a real quick video, man. Somebody out there is trying to figure out what people are talking about when they leave comments like, release the big fish. The little ones taste better. I personally do not subscribe to that belief. I don't know where they get that from. Listen, I have here today two two-pound-plus black crappie. I want you to get a good look at that. Two pound plus black crappie, man. I got two of them. Here, let me give it to you like this. And that's what we're going to be cleaning today. It only takes two for us to really have a really good amount of fish, man. But there's nothing wrong with eating these crappie. I know some people trophy fish. Us, on the other hand, we grocery fish. Y'all know what time it is. We're going to clean and cook. We're going to be frying today. Cleaning and cooking two pound Black crappie. Stick with me, man. I'm gonna show you what you need to do to make sure this crappie tastes good every single time. Hey, Oscar, roll that intro, bro. Fish and Ken Hook City TV, and I'm back with another one, man. This is going to be a quick video. Somebody out there is trying to figure out how to make the perfect fried crappie. Listen, I'm going to tell you something, man. The reason I'm doing this video today is because I've been getting a few comments like this one right here that basically says that you want to put back the big crappie because the little ones taste better. Today, I'm about to debunk that, man. I have here two, two pound black crappie. Let me tell you something, man. It ain't nothing wrong with harvesting these crappie. At Hook City TV, we don't trophy fish, we grocery fish. I'm not saying clean out the lake with two-pound crappie, but where we were the other day on Lake PB, listen, that's all that was there. So if you're going to eat crappie, it's the two-pounders you're going to eat. These crappie are good to eat. And I'm going to show you what it is that you need to do to prepare these crappie as we fry them and make them taste just as good as those 10 to 11 inches. Everybody keeps talking about. Y'all stay tuned, man. It's about to go down. Clean and cook on the way. Let's go, baby. Real quick, we're going to go ahead and first deal with how to fillet these crappie. Man, we're not going to do anything any different. Going to be using the bubble blade today. Uh, Dad has the other knife that I love so much, but using the shark blade as well. Listen, one cut, right? Listen to me. We want to angle this knife, man. We want to get right behind this gill, but we want to try to get as much head meat as possible. So look at this cut. Okay, hope y'all can see that, man. That's the first cut right behind the gill. Second cut, we're going to go ahead and go in. So we hit the backbone, which I've just done. I'm going to turn and start cutting at the same time, and that's going to catch all of this back meat here which is the most important part. That back strap is the most important part. I don't care what you eat. So we're gonna get that. Now check this out. I stopped just to show you something. So we've, we've got the important stuff. Now we are going through the stomach, but that's okay because we're gonna discard that anyway. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start trailing my knife and we're gonna get all the way down to the tail and we're gonna stop at the tail. We're not gonna go through the tail. Here we go. Stopped at the tail, right? Now check this out. Those were the first two cuts. It's gonna get a little crazy. It's gonna get a little crazy, I know. Boom. Fish is open. You can see the bones, which lets me know that we stayed really close. We got all the meat that we could get. We're not wasting this fish, as a lot of people think. Now, second thing we're going to do, I got from my boy Kyron, a.k.a. the Slabrador, which is while it's on the skin, while it's still on the skin, we're going to go ahead and get our uh, rib cage out. We'll get that out now. That way we don't have to keep handling the fish. We're going to do it all in, in, in one motion. Ain't going to be no going back to hit the rib cage. Check this out. V-cut around the rib cage. If you notice, I angled my knife in. Now do the same thing this way. All right, so that's the cut. Now, what we're gonna do, we're gonna start the knife 
we're gonna make sure we go to the skin we're not cutting through the skin and then we're gonna lay this knife as flat as we can we might even put a little flex in it and go all the way through the fillet here we go all right now you see that automatically the rib cage comes out and we have our fillet guys i'm sorry i know people say don't eat these fish and i get it a lot of people don't want to eat them but that is a beautiful i mean that fillet as long as my hand man that is a beautiful fillet we got some more stuff to do to this i'm gonna finish cleaning this crappie and that other one and i'll show you what's next most people do it right there all right guys so we have this fish clean and I just want to show you this is what we're left with okay I don't want to get gross or gruesome or anything, but this is what we're left with. We made sure we rolled the bones. And listen, man, there is nothing else you can do to this crappie. Unless you eat gills, eyeballs, and guts, maybe crappie roe, which, you know, look, check out that last uh, crappie roe or crappie egg video. Won't be doing that again, but this is a cleaned crappie, man. No waste here. We don't eat bones, we don't eat fins, and we don't eat skin. All right, guys, so we have um, some fillets. Listen to me, man. So one thing I want y'all to always be careful of, man, is smells. Something don't smell right, something don't look right. Remember, we eat wild stuff. Something don't smell right, something don't look right. Don't eat it. Um, cut open that second fish. As soon as I cut it open uh, in its gut, it was some weird looking stuff that I had never seen before in a fish as well as the smell when I cut it open. So we went ahead and discarded of that other fish. Hate that I had to do that, but at the end of the day, I'm gonna be safe before anything else. But check this out, me and my daughter are gonna eat good off of two fillets. Here is the trick, this is the money shot. This is what everybody's trying to figure out. Well, why is it that this isn't gonna taste good? There's nothing wrong with this fish. The issue that people have is, a 10 inch fillet is a thinner fillet therefore it cooks through a lot better when you try to cook this entire piece and fry it just like this listen it's going to be harder for it to fry all the way through this is what you got to do with larger fish when i say larger i'm talking about usually really 13 inch crappie and over especially if they got some thickness to them and as you see that that, that fillet man that is a two pound crappie fillet. First thing I'm gonna do guys, I'm gonna cut off what I call a thumb. That's gonna fry up real nice. Those are for your people to say, I want my fish really hard. Cut those off. Those are the pieces they're gonna want, okay? First and foremost. You got one each, right? <clears throat> now what you have left is the loin. Check out what I do, man. Let me change the camera angle. I want you to cut this into two or three finger squares. I think two is gonna be right. So that's what we're gonna do. And you gotta remember, when you're cooking fish, man, a lot of times, that's all you want right there. So it don't take a lot, especially if you're gonna be having french fries or a salad or anything else. But that's what you want. And again, look at that thickness, man. We could butterfly, guys. So two different things you can do to ensure that you get a really good fry out of that, out of that fish. But that's what we're gonna to do today, man. We're gonna cut it into chunks. And then the thicker parts of it, we can butterfly. Another thing to do is lay it on the on the 
cutting board, stick your knife right where center would be, and butterfly that fish. All right? Listen, now you have some really good looking pieces of fish right there. We're going to finish these up and we're going to fry them. And I'm going to show you there is no difference between this um, or a 10 inch crappie who has a fillet that will probably be about that thick anyway. Let's go ahead and finish it up. As I get further down, as that as that loin thins out, I'll keep some of those whole just like that. It will not be a problem frying those like that. There's one more trick, so y'all stay tuned because there's one more thing you want to do when frying these big old pieces of fish. We're going to get this finished up, and I'm going to show you the next trick to making sure you have some perfectly fried crappie. I'll be right back. All right, y'all, so we got the fillets we want. And again, we cut a lot of them down. Two, three, four, six, nine, 12, 15, 16, 17, 20, 22. Now I want y'all to keep in mind, this was just one fish. Somebody's asking, what am I doing right now? So what I'm doing is I'm putting these fish in some cold water so that these fillets can firm up. Um, and the reason I wanted to do this on camera is because a lot of people will, will say, well, man, what do I do when I got mushy fillets? Um, I know a lot of people deal with that. I really don't deal with it too much, but if and when I do, this is what I do. I make sure I put these fillets in some really cold ice water. And what that's gonna do, that's gonna help my fillets to firm up. Um, and I know a lot of people have probably noticed some of this blood that they see off of this crappie. Now that some people, don't care for the taste of that. You can clean that off if you wanted to. Um, you can fillet that off if you want to. It's not so bad with crappie, but we'll soak it and some of that will also come out of there. So there's another benefit to soaking them um, in a little bit of ice water. We'll let those soak for about 10, 15 minutes. They're gonna firm up. And in the meantime, I'm gonna get my uh, grease in a pot um, and get my seasonings and everything ready to be put on this fish. Give that about 15 minutes. All right, guys, while I was doing this thing, I just went ahead and got some cornmeal. Don't have a lot because we're not cooking a whole lot of fish, but just cornmeal in a gallon bag uh, so we can have something to shake it in. Put that right there. What I'm going to do, I'm going to reach over here and I'm going to start grabbing my fillets. And what I want to do is lay them on this uh, paper towel and they did firm up. They did firm up and look how some of the blood is coming out of them. So it's not going to have that really strong fishy taste. If you're really sensitive, if you have a really sensitive palate, then you want to make sure you get all of that red off, especially when you're dealing with like a, a catfish or something like that. But our fillets really did firm up and I think they're going to be good to go. Looking real white, which is what crappie fillets are known for. There's our little thumbs. And again, we're just laying them on this paper towel. And I'm gonna go over the top of them with another paper towel and just pat them dry. We wanna make sure these are dry because we're gonna be using a mustard binder. Um, you don't have to. I like it. Um, for anybody that's saying, well, man, I don't like the way mustard tastes. This is not something, uh, that hot grease is gonna take care of the mustard taste. There won't be a mustard taste on this fish. The fish is gonna taste like what we're seasoning it with. And we're gonna be seasoning with uh, with uh, garlic powder, that's all of that. We'll be seasoning with garlic powder and lemon pepper. Let's pat these dry. All I wanna do is lay over the top of them. We're just getting all the moisture out. Anybody that's frying fish, if you ever see somebody running from the grease when they lower something into it that they're about to fry and they're running from all the popping, it's because they have moisture in it. So when you don't have that water, in hot grease, you do not get the pop. You do not get the pop. So we're gonna lay those right there for a second.
I'm gonna put a little mustard in here. Get some good old Frenchies, right? And yes, I'm cooking with gloves. Yes, I'm cleaning with gloves. So y'all, y'all stick with me. It's gonna get good. We're gonna just get, get a little dirty. Get a little dirty. We just wanna make sure all the fillets have a little mustard in them again. For those that don't like mustard, you will not be able to taste the mustard. Now, if you're allergic to mustard, that's a whole nother, nother game. Ken ain't telling you to take something you're allergic to and, and create it as a binder. Now, what I normally do when I'm cooking a bunch of fish is I only put about three or four pieces in at a time because what will happen is your cornmeal will get clumpy and then that'll give you a kind of a clumpy texture when you're frying your fish. So you only put a couple in at a time, uh, enough for the corn, the dry cornmeal to cover the fish, and then you fry that, or you set it to the side, you put more in it, okay? But we don't want the cornmeal to clump up, man. That's Medium high heat. I'm gonna be using just a little old pot, nothing big, nothing crazy. I know a lot of people are sitting here saying, man, what is this brother going to season the food? Let me tell you something, man. You're not putting seasoning in the uh, cornmeal. I believe that's a waste of time. I'm not going to put it directly on the fish right now because I believe that you can get more flavor when you add it as soon as it comes out of the grease. I will be putting a little garlic powder on there now. But the lemon pepper, it's going on afterwards. Remember that. It's not gonna take a whole lot, and we're gonna get that flavor and that kick we want out of our fried fish. If you don't like lemon pepper, man, use whatever you like. If it's seasoned salt, if it's just salt and pepper, do your thing. Just be careful with any of this seasoning, man. You don't wanna over season your food or under season your food. I've been doing this for a while, so I feel comfortable about what I got going. And honestly, man, I ain't never got no complaints. And believe me, if you from the Pierce family or the Nickerson family, when something don't taste right, folks gonna tell you, man. So I think I'm doing a pretty good job with it. Y'all try it out. Let me know in the comment section what you think. Um, grease is over there getting hot. We're gonna go ahead and throw these in the cornmeal. Like I said, I usually don't put a lot in at a time, but that's all the fish we're gonna be cooking. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it all in there, y'all. All I gotta do is close that puppy up, leave a little air trap inside, widen your bag. All right, bottle it up to where it looks like a bubble. Get your shake on. Now, for y'all that don't understand what binder means, that means it's, that we're using that mustard as something to kind of be act as a glue to make sure we get a really good, well-balanced cornmeal on our fish, and I'm already seeing it. Whew. That's exactly what we need. That that binder is gonna make sure we have a really good looking piece of fish. It's got some really good texture on it without being clumpy. We're gonna get up the temp, and it's gonna go down. How do y'all know? Anytime you're deep frying or frying something. You want your grease to be at about 350 or between 350 and 375. Um, anything too low and you're going to have some greasy, soggy stuff, uh, fried food. And if it's too high, what you're going to do is you're going to burn uh, the outside before the inside cooks right. So you're not going to get an even cook. So you want to make sure you're only putting enough that this can handle because if you, if you overload your pot, it's going to make your temperature uh, drop really fast. And then again, you get below 350 and you don't have uh, what you're looking for as a final product. So what you should see is when it goes in there, that thing ought to be sizzling. I know a lot of people say, well, when you put a couple in, it's no, when you got some good hot grease, which makes for really good uh, crispy fish, that fish ought to start sizzling as soon as it touches down. Shouldn't be no, Oh, it'll take a minute. 
I don't want no soggy fried food, and I hope y'all don't either. So that's about half. You gotta remember, these are some small pieces. That's about half the bag, so we're gonna start with that. Um, fry time for something that's so thin. Remember, we butterflied these pieces, so we shouldn't need any more than about really three to four minutes. Good way of telling, especially when you're deep frying, is this stuff is going to float to the top. Um, I'll give you a look at what I'm talking about. Everything is fresh in right now, as y'all can see, um, and it's rolling really hard. What I mean is you see a lot of bubbles. It's frying really hard, okay? Um, here in a couple of minutes, uh, it's, again, it's not going to take long. You're going to see less fry, and your fish is going to be sitting at the top of the grease. When it floats, it's time to let it go. It's got to come out of there. The two minute mark, you can see how those are at the top now. It's less bubbles, it's not frying as much. And remember that we butterfly these pieces. So they're not really thick pieces of fish. If you leave them in there too long, they're gonna be tough. So we're gonna go ahead and grab our tongs and get these out of here. Now remember, be real careful when getting this fish out of here. And then we have a last step. We're not done because remember, we didn't season. But guys, God, dog. I'm gonna let y'all get a good look at these golden fried black crappie, man. God, dog. Woo! Mouth watering. If your mouth is watering, I need to know it in the comment section because mine is watering. Mine is watering. Again, these were floating. They're not frying as much, and we don't want to overcook our fillets. All right, here, go, here comes the money shot. <clears throat> We're gonna be using our uh, lemon pepper from Tone Seasoning. Y'all see that? Now check this out. Now we're gonna put our lemon pepper on. And that's all we need right there. Believe me when I tell you, it does not take a lot um, when you do it like this. Now when you put it into your corn uh, meal first, some of that is gonna stay in the bag. All of my seasoning is on my fish and it doesn't take a lot. Guys, that's perfectly cooked. We got a few more to do, man, and then I'm gonna get to eating. Just like that, man, I'm done. Fish and Cami will be later. Let me tell you something. Two pound black crappie, giant black crappie, clean and cook right here, man. So what I decided to do is try to pretty up my plate and this is what I came up with. Probably salad. So I'll probably be eating probably by itself and then just give them a little old spring mix together with some uh, Olive Garden Italian. Listen, if y'all ain't never ate none of that stuff, whew, I'm trying to tell you something good. So real quick, we're gonna say grace, man. Listen, on Thursday nights, we used to pray um, at the duration of every Thursday night live. So um, I haven't been on live this year. Um, and I really don't have plans to just yet, but I want to go ahead and uh, say grace as well as pray for all my viewers. Uh, thank y'all for watching, man. Um, and then we're going to get a good taste of this. So if you would, praying people, pray with your boy. Heavenly Father, we come to you today say thank you, Lord, for another day. Thank you, Father, for this meal that uh, <clears throat> has been prepared. Thank you, Father, for the energy to do so. Thank you for every person watching. God, I pray that you bless them abundantly, Lord. And I pray, Father, that you bless them spiritually, O Heavenly Father, that each person under the sound of my voice would have a relationship with you, dear God. Father, we love you. We thank you. We thank you for salvation. We thank you for freedom. We thank you, Father, that you have covered us even uh, though we sin, dear God. I ask that you continue to bless us, continue to help us, help this channel, Heavenly Father. And we'll be reminded always to give you the praise and the glory. Thank you for this food. I pray there be a nourishment to our bodies. Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right, guys. Listen, man, I already know what time it is. Listen, I already know what time it is. But I just want to. Y'all know what that. Have me. Don't bite your screen. Don't bite your screen. Oh, perfect, y'all. What does a two pound crappie taste like? And what does a 10 inch crappie taste like? Cause all I know, this tastes 
good. It tastes good. And I can literally feed me, my wife, and my child off one fish. Why not keep them? Look, I'm not advocating that we should go wear out two pound crappie and keep them and eat them. Um, I'm all for conservation efforts and all that, but I'm also all for um, conserving us. This is what we do, man. We fish to eat, we fish to live. And it's a renewable resource, man. We should respect it, but there's nothing wrong with eating giant two pound black crappie. Hope y'all enjoyed the video, man. Y'all stay tuned, we got more fishing. Got more fishing and a hunting video coming. I'm at you.